Hello everyone. It's my great honor to participate in this conference. My name is Bonin Zhang, coming from China University of Mining and Technology, Beijing. On behalf of all of my co-authors, today I'm going to talk about coal power demand and the path to peak carbon emissions in China. Our study is a provincial scenario analysis with the perspectives of CO2 related health impact. Let's start with the background from two aspects, the severe circumstances of carbon emissions and the significant contributions of coal power generation. Actually, we are undergoing the retaliatory emissions after the industry production activities recover in the post-pandemic period. As shown in the first figure, we can find global CO2 emissions from energy combustion and the industrial process rebounded in 2021 to raise up the highest ever annual level, valuing 36.3 gigatons. And as a country whose emissions accounted for a great part of the global emissions, China's CO2 emissions by sector mainly come from electricity and heat producers, with a percentage of 53 in 2019. Even though China's renewable energy capacity expanded rapidly in recent years, the power sector still took up about 47% of the total emissions in the national energy system. And as shown in these two figures, influenced by the coal dominated primary energy structure in China, coal power is China's main electricity supplier. And it is estimated that even though non fossil energy accounts for nearly 25% of primary energy consumption by 2030 in China, it would still be the major electricity supplier. Therefore, we can draw the conclusion that the pace of emissions reduction in coal power sector strongly affects the peaking time of China's total CO2 emissions. Thus, the objective of our study is to investigate the provincial and regional comparisons of coal power in China and investigate the potential pathways referring to CO2 related health impact. Overall, an integrated assessment of framework is proposed. The first part is coal power demand model. Constrained by the 45 year plan and the non rich objectives through the year 2035 published by each province, we construct three dynamic scenarios to forecast the coal power demand during 2020 to 2035 using Kaya identity and Monte Carlo simulation. The second part is CO2 emission and the concentrations module using rollback model. The coal power demand is transformed into CO2 emissions and concentrations. The third part is health impact assessment model. It is estimate, proposed to estimate the health damage due to environmental pollution and obtain the economic loss in monetized terms. Three major steps and four kinds of CO2 related disease are involved. We also calculate the risk of economic loss induced by CO2 related health impact using information diffusion model. Overall, using this integrated assessment framework, the coal power demand by 2035 is forecasted and converted into indicators of emissions, concentration, health, and the economy. Here, we list the major calculation equations applied in our study. In more detail, 29 provinces in China are investigated, as shown in the second form. It should be noted that Ningxia and Tibet are not taken into account due to data accessibility. In terms of Kaya identity, the basic parameters for prediction include population, GDP per capita, urbanization rate, and the industry structure. The actual values are acquired from the Provincial Statistical Yearbook from 2009 to 2019, and the projection values are predicted following the past trend. The third form shows the examples of basic parameters for forecasting in Beijing. 
Second of scenarios are established in this study. Phase 9, rapid development and low speed development scenario. Specifically, baseline scenario refers to the most likely pattern in which the core power demand and social economic developing level follow the past trends, and the rapid development and low speed development scenario respectively represent optimistic and pessimistic plan. Besides the basic parameters mentioned before, there is a series of driving factors need to be considered as well. For instance, coal power intensity for industry, urban or rural coal power consumption elasticity coefficient. The fourth form gives the values of driving factors for three scenarios in Beijing. Notably, Monte Carlo simulation is innovatively applied to transform the static scenarios into dynamic versions, which could address the sarcastic uncertainties in our prediction. Our results are threefold. First, for the coal power demand, it is found that China's historical coal power demand during 2009 to 2019 represents a curvilinear rise trend with an average growth rate at 5.19% annually. And following this trend, it is forecasted the coal power trend would still keep rising by 2035. Taking the rapid development scenario as an example, 4,274.04 to 7,970.45 billion kilowatt hour is estimated for each year in 2020 to 2035. As for regional and provincial comparisons, Shandong and Qinghai are the two provinces with the greatest and least requirement in coal power. And as shown in this figure, we can find East China supplies a larger share of the average coal power demand. For CO2 emissions and concentrations, it is found that national CO2 emissions from coal power generation would increase by 65.68% in 2020 to 2035 relative to the 2050 level. And uh, Guangdong, Jiangsu, Shandong province are the three provinces with the greatest cumulative CO2 emissions, while Hainan, Yunnan, and Qinghai are three provinces with the smallest cumulative CO2 emissions. Further, there is an obvious pattern of east-west spatial heterogeneity of CO2 emissions. And as shown in this figure, we can find the coal power demand in East China contributes to the greatest CO2 concentrations, while West and Northeast China have the least growth. As for life and economic loss, it is computed that 96 0.1 years of net loss would be induced by per 1 ppm increase in CO2 emissions and among the four kinds of CO2 related health impacts, respiratory disease contributes the most to the total health damage. Further, the rapid development scenario reveals a potential peaking pathways in which the number of avoided net losses could reach to 10,539 for the whole nation during 2020 to 2035. It is indicated that there is a 51.75% probability that the economic loss of no CO2 related health impact from coal power sector would exceed $350 million, suggesting that the Economic loss caused by CO2 from coal power generation in China is not optimistic. An interesting finding is shown in this figure. We can find Gansu, Xinjiang, and Inner Mongolia occupy a great part of economic loss in provincial GDP, however, with less projected coal power demand. However, Fujian, Guangdong, and Hubei call for great demand in coal power but have less proportion of economic loss to their GDP. Therefore, we can draw the conclusion that the formulation of emission reduction targets
cannot rely on only single indicator. It is essential to comprehensively consider the provincial distinctions in social, economic, and ecological conditions. Therefore, in a part of the discussion, we believe that the picking path for coal power sector in China should be principled on common but differentiated responsibility. For instance, Hunan, Jiangxi, Hubei, Anhui, and Henan are five provinces of central China. They are identified as high coal power demand. It is relevant to the strategy to boost the central region development. During this period, the accelerating developing of economy and the enhancing of new type industrialization are closely bound up with the electricity security. Therefore, technological innovations play an imposing role for emission reduction for central China, and the coordinated development is of uttermost importance. Further, we sorted out the relevant policies of clean production in coal power sector. A total of 29 items of policies are classified into four types. Some policy suggestions are put forward after the several review. Taking the technical innovation policy as an example, it is proposed that the technical direction of green and low carbon transition in 40's five-year plan is power generation technology under coal and biomass company. Undoubtedly, establishing and implementing the much technical innovation policies is one of the keys to striving towards a sustainable development for coal power sector in China in the near term. Some conclusions could be obtained from our study. First, as China's coal power would keep rising by 2035, the challenges for China's coal power sector to peak its carbon emissions by 2030 are still serious in present circumstances. Further, an obvious east-based spatial heterogeneity in CO2 emissions is observed. Life and the economic loss of CO2-related health impact are significant. Therefore, the differentiated mitigation policies based on the characteristics of each province would be highly needed to fulfill the ambitious goals to peak emissions in China's power, coal power sector. Finally, it should be noted that this paper provides insights into the potential pathways from a top-down perspective. However, uncertainty is an inherent feature of no-carbon transition. Significant uncertainties in social, economic, technological, behavioral, and policy should be considered in our future study. Above is all of my presentation for our study. Thanks for listening. Thank you all.